So we're here with the uh, the artist that is uh, behind uh, the uh, American Park, American Bank Park. Uh, if you could, uh, your uh, your name and your title for the record, please. Yeah, I'm Matt Winicky, uh, landscape designer. Uh, I build gardens. Uh, you, you build gardens. I build gardens. So. You've built a kind of a garden park here. Yeah, it's a nice little uh, little. Uh, Oasis outside. Um, great views here. The river, uh, the McKinstry mural can now be seen. Um, it's a nice space uh, for anybody to enjoy out here. What were your uh, What were your directives going into this? Um, well, John and uh, Donna had approached me this past winter to um, think about what we could or what they could do at uh, this space. Uh, there used to be a two-car garage, a uh, shed that was. I believe part of the old uh, uh, hardware store here on the corner in that building. Um, so uh, I, I consulted with a fellow designer, Scott Gear, uh, Gear Landscape down in Middleton. Um, he does computer animated uh, renderings and designs. Uh, I only do the hand drawn designs. Uh, so Scott and I collaborated on some ideas. Um, their goal was to try to keep some of the existing structure if they could, uh, whether it be the, the concrete floor or the walls. Um, so uh, we took uh, their ideas and, and desires to create an outdoor patio for their employees to uh, enjoy and for anybody uh, in the public to enjoy. Um, took a little while to come up with some ideas. Um, once we created the ideas, I presented the plan to him, and uh, it was a matter of just coordinating uh, a time to install it, the materials, allocating what materials I was going to use, uh, what plants I was going to use, uh, etc. What are your thought processes behind the plant selection? So the plants are all designed to not require so much watering once they've been established. Um, once they're established, uh, for the most part, they're drought tolerant. Uh, we'll, they'll attract some birds, they'll attract some butterflies. Um, there'll be something flowering at uh, almost every month of the season. Uh, and there's some winter interest within the trees that I've selected. Well, can you elaborate on that? Uh, for instance, uh, the, the tallest tree I've put in was the, uh, is right over here is an American sycamore. Also a plane tree. Um, that is a widely used tree for urban areas uh, because of its ability to filter out uh, particulates and pollutants. Um, it's also uh, one of the best trees uh, that can handle almost uh, any type of soil condition. And in this instance, um, I needed a tree that could handle any type of soil conditions. Uh, um, this isn't my first project in the uh, tower parking lot. I had done InterQuest uh, several years back, and in, during that project I, uh, I discovered an old asphalt uh, driveway, or road, uh, when I was putting in that project. And this project, uh, when I went to place my last boulder, um, I ended up digging up uh, a whole bucket load of scrap metal and glass. I think we've got one piece of glass to show. Um, but I, I realized I couldn't grow a garden on all this metal and glass and slag from the foundry. So um, I had to excavate out about 20 yards of material. It's actually still sitting out at my house because I have no idea where I'm going to go with this pile of um, garbage, um, <laughs> needless to say, but it took about 30 yards of soil then to bring in and fill that big hole in. Um, so I needed a tree that was going to be able to survive that. Plus, its winter interest, uh, it has exfoliating bark. Actually, two of the three trees I put in have exfoliating bark. Uh, the sycamore has a nice creamy to olive colored uh, bark tissue. It's uh, one of its main interests fe and features is, is its winter uh, interest in its trunk. The other tree is a paper bark maple. Uh, it has more of a copper uh, cinnamon red 
um, exfoliating bark and a gorgeous autumn color. The, one of the other striking features is the uh, the, the stones that are, are part of this park. Can you give us some insight into uh, into the selection process and, yeah. and and the assembly? Well, with the ex existing uh, public structure behind us, the, the restroom being made out of limestone, uh, it was important for me to use uh, native limestone to the area. Uh, all the stone came from about 10 miles, uh, uh, within 10 miles north of here. Um, from various farmers' fence lines. Um, these are all basically uh, limestone boulders that have been stripped away from their matrix uh, during the last glacier and deposited all over in fields. And, um, so they have a lot of character. They've been aged. Uh, there's some moss growing on some, some plants that I found growing in some. Uh, I hand selected them all out at the quarry and I laid them all out. Um, I marked out an area on the quarry floor basically and I believe it was Father's Day weekend I laid out all the boulders and kind of picked them all out. Uh, there's actually 35 tons uh, of rock in this space. Um, is it easy to move boulders 10 no. miles to a, a downtown parking lot? No, this required, um, I worked with W.D. Navis, uh, Jeff Navis is my stone supplier. Um, the rocks had to be loaded onto a semi and then brought in and uh, the loader, then Jeff brought his uh, big front end loader in uh, and unloaded the uh, boulders. I had to uh, bring in a 33,000 uh, pound excavator then to facilitate taking out the original concrete uh, floor that was in the garage as well as place all the big rocks. Uh, once the rocks were placed, the excavator went out and it was all handwork from there on out. Was there a particular strategy to the positioning of the rocks? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so these rocks were designed to be able to, uh, one, retain this area behind and create a, a raised uh, planter and kind of utilize the wall, the original uh, concrete wall that was here. Um, there was a door, uh, one of the garage doors was right behind me, so when we, when we did this I had to bring in Bailey concrete and masonry uh, to help pour a concrete wall, as well as concrete footings that are under each post of the pergola. Yeah, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the pergola here. Yeah, so the pergola was, um, um, I'm not afraid to admit it, uh, was built by the Amish in Pennsylvania, a uh, great company. Um, basically, I picked out the pergola I saw fit uh, for the space and then uh, ordered it, waited for it to be shipped. Uh, lesson learned on this one, I will have the company stain them prior to coming uh, and being delivered. Um, I had to stain it myself and not a big fan of staining and painting, but uh, but it turned out. So. Well, historically, what can you tell us about a pergola uh, as opposed to a gazebo? A uh, gazebo uh, is going to generally be an enclosed structure. Pergolas are more of an open air structure. Um, yeah, and uh, the the placement of the pergola with the rocks and everything. This was all hand drawn by you. Yes, correct. So I wanted the pergola to somewhat be offset of the public restroom building. Um, I positioned it in this spot here so that when you're in this space it helps to screen out the utility lines that are right off to my shoulder. So when you're in this space you don't really uh, notice all the power lines. So now everything's done, the ribbon's uh, being cut. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts about how everything turned out? Well, uh, I think it turned out really well. Um, I'm very pleased. I, I know um, based on uh, John and Donna Othout's uh, um, I know they're very pleased with things. Uh, a lot of the folks pass by. Uh, traffic has almost come to a crawl as of when I've been out working here, so that was really nice to see, and I've had wonderful compliments from the, from the public, for sure. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you.